This is John, who plays Diego, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Die by the Sword podcast. Uh, I want to give a shout out to the guys over at Midnight Syndicate. You can check out their music over at midnightsyndicate.com. And we'd also like to thank Sword Coast Soundscapes for the wonderful ambient sounds you hear throughout the podcast. You can check them out at youtube.com slash Sword Coast Soundscapes. And you can check out our website at diebythesword.podcast.com. You can connect to everybody in the community on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to find us. And you can also contact us at diebythesword.podcast at gmail.com. And don't forget to leave a great review wherever you listen to us. Now, let's get into this episode. John doing the most visual thing on the podcast. <laughs> right. Totally. Everybody should be excited. They just uh, don't know it. <laughs> he's getting himself hyped for the podcast. Right. Yeah. I mean, this is uh, recording the video too, so I could always release the video on YouTube. Ooh. Oh. 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 Hold on. <laughs> Let me fix my face. I don't have to. It just records it also. <laughs> This is the only face I got, people. You got to deal with it. <laughs> yeah, people have seen my face on TV already. Hey, humble brag. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I had a kid teacher me this weekend, this week. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, I was going to a, a, a Rangers game and was walking up to uh, Globe Life Field. And uh, there's this whole school of kids right in front of me with their, their teachers and stuff. And they're like talking and chatting and everything. And we're all waiting for the light to change. And this one kid turns around, looks at me and yells, hello, sir. And I'm like, I've just been teachered. <laughs> <laughs> So what did you say back to him? Hello, kid. <laughs> <laughs> what a weird thing to say to a person. I know, Just right? Scre- turn around and scream at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I say I've talked to, but I don't think I've ever touched somebody thinking they were somebody that I knew. Oh, I have. Yes. I have come, up, well, I come up behind somebody that I thought I knew, and I was like trying to tickle them, and <gasps> nope. Oh, <laughs> so where were you trying to tickle exactly? <laughs> Under the arms. Still pretty intimate, but not the yeah. most, I guess. Yeah. Thankfully, <laughs> could have been worse. <laughs> but then you got their you got their armpits, stranger armpit, all over your hands. Dad, I'm like, I gotta go wash my hands now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> stranger danger. <laughs> <laughs> our dm is dying today in case anybody is listening <laughs> yes catches that it's not covid though i don't know what it is but it's not covid yeah you've well, had a close. rough you've had a rough stretch the last couple of weeks uh-huh <laughs> it's probably because i've been on the go so much and uh, my body hasn't had time to catch up yeah yeah, I feel that. I was sick for the past couple of days. Just not real bad, but under the weather. And today I came home and took a nap just for you guys, so I'd be re-energized. Mm. I was going to say, <laughs> I did the same thing, but I'm not sick. <laughs> <laughs> nap sounds Naps nice. all around, I did too. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> yeah, you know those, those first tests where they were pushing it up your nose? God, those were so not oh. cool. You mean where they're scrambling your brain? Yes. <laughs> it's like, my brain, my brain. Mm-hmm. I've like, lost three I, memories. Uh. Say, I think I forgot fourth grade. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. Yeah. And we had so many of those being part of the vaccine study. Uh, yes. I had so many people in my nose. It was fucking ridiculous. Oops, sorry, my bad. <laughs> 
that's how you really feel. Thank you for your service. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> Between that and the number of vials of blood, I think they have enough to make it full other me out of the vials of blood mm. that they've collected from that. Because every time we went in, something. it was like nine vials of blood. Yeah. And not those little tiny vials either. Me. Yeah, they know way too much about me now. <laughs> they do. <laughs> so, if you had, if they did clone you, and it was full on adult clone, and you saw it, would you fight your clone, or would you, you know, your clone? Because it would know everything that you like, I, but it also know all the fighting that. You... That's true. I guess it's true. It wouldn't have your memories. It might but have I would preferences. Yeah, so there. Yeah, that would that's a good thing though. The Highlander, <laughs> there can only be <laughs> only one. Only be one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> take you out. Excuse me, I've I've got, got to take I've, out my clone. I think I would have to get to know my clone on a very personal level. <laughs> seems like it might be the way to go. <laughs> <laughs> it seems very narcissistic to say, but. It's just a curiosity. <laughs> All right. Uh, I was gonna say I don't find myself no. attractive, so <laughs> so I would I no. wouldn't be doing all that. My first question would be is like, how much have you drank? Because I have done a lot, and I need a new liver. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just, just music parts. organs. <laughs> <laughs> I'd give him my gin-soaked liver. <laughs> they probably don't want it. <laughs> like I have put a lot of miles on this body. <laughs> and some of them are rough. Well, Dang. there's also... I've had an, I had a scar from when I was like four. And I have no idea what I would look like without that. And so it'd be like, wait a minute. You look weird. <laughs> i was gonna say i have a lot of mental scars from my childhood so i would love to see myself as a normal person (laughs) me right now (laughs) now that would be something else too yeah (laughs) yeah like you look at you being all normal and stuff (laughs) That'd be kind of a cool idea, but I'd just be in the background, you know, behind, you know, he's, he's got out there playing softball, being a stud. And I'm just got like in the back with a hoodie on real low, just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that. yeah you that's my it. boy. <laughs> <laughs> to think of what could have been. Yeah. yeah. That's my twin. <laughs> Ooh, would you try to pass it off as your twin? That's a good question too. That's like a soap opera story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like. 38 years, all of a sudden a clone just pops up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, the other thing that will always worry me about all these things with clones, where did they get the belly button? That's how you know. I'd say the most fun one would probably be it pops out fully grown, not like Star Wars clones. Because then you watch your clone like probably age within the next few years and then you're like oh this oh you could actually that could be good you see what you look like as an old man i do that daily (laughs) 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 i could relive my childhood and say okay first off don't climb (laughs) you're gonna fall and break an arm (laughs) (laughs) Ooh, can you imagine it'd probably be really frustrating trying to raise a clone of yourself from like baby to however. Cause like, you know, all your own, like hangups and like your own, like, uh, your own tales when you do your telling the film. Yeah. Oops. That too. Yeah. <laughs> and like, you know, your own insecurities and stuff. So if your clone started to be like, like not like you want it, you're like, no idiot. You could be better. You're like, Oh wait, dang. Now I'm the bad person. <laughs> it might be better to have a clone of someone else. That's just like having a different kid. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, if I was making a clone for myself, I would want it like a, 
a clone to go play sports with, like tennis, pickleball, stuff like that. So I'd, I'd oh. make them ideal for that. Uh, wait, ideal meaning evenly matched or just like a little bit worse than you? Oh, no, they, they can be they can take it over. I just ride the coattail like, oh, my okay. God, he's so good. <laughs> Look at us winning all these titles. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm living vicariously through my clone. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Right. <clears throat> See, that's what my athletic potential would have been. <laughs> right. Look, I could be so good if I wasn't broken and <laughs> in my knees yeah. and my ankles and my uh, shoulder. Uh, yeah. But I've always thought that would be fun: is to have a clone to do like sports stuff with. Since I didn't have any really uh, brothers or sisters growing up. Yeah. I had a lot. You can take one. I'm good. <laughs> I've, heard, I've heard your stories. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love my family. I do. But, you know, I have a lot of brothers and sisters, so lots of different personalities. Mm-hmm. I just have one sister. She's a decade yeah, older than me. <laughs> a decade older, you said? Oh my god! Yeah, I feel like Philip's like, if you enjoy fighting for your life, <laughs> then nothing but brothers is for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I always enjoyed wrestling. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> bad job, bad. <laughs> so. Sp- Speaking of wrestling, I don't know uh, how to segue this in. Uh, <laughs> I'll pity the fool. No. <laughs> Speaking of masturbation with extra steps. <laughs> I'll pity the fool. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So, I believe last time uh, we got together to record an episode... Uh, it was like a month ago, feels like. We did our uh, level 10 level ups. Oh, Ooh, yeah. Uh, I'm feeling frisky. You know, cleared out the rest of the top floor of the house. This house is clear. You looted some creatures. And... I believe we left off with y'all uh, getting ready to go through the phase door. Completely exhausted. No spells, no uh, anything. <laughs> well, we did. I thought we did rest just off off uh, camera, so to speak. So I have a question. Um, are, are we going to bring our animals through this door? I thought you teleported them in. No, they, they're back outside. Room. I can't see because of this fog of war. Mine's, mine's in the house. I thought we'd put him back. <laughs> yeah, Havoc's on the lookout, bro. Pablo? Pablo? Oh, there he is. All right. Diego's still there. And it looks like your Tresor Tops is on the, on the stairs. <laughs> Hello, Pablo. There he is. He's trying to get up the stairs. <laughs> his tiny little legs. Climb, Pablo, climb. Uh, yeah. These steps are big and his legs are small. <laughs> But are we going to take them into a dungeon? It's up to you. <laughs> well, it's my emotional support animal, so if I go down there without it, stuff's going to get crazy. Especially me. <laughs> I mean, it's a mammoth, so it can it can absolutely give you a hug back. Just with his trunk, just pats you on the back. Absolutely. Yeah, he <laughs> gives me good games all the time. Just pats me on the butt. So, good job, buddy. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't think we mentioned in you know, this recording. We mentioned it before the other one, you know, died on us. Uh, but I believe at the end of that last episode, you guys decided to rest up in the attic. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. So you guys I feel are, totally rested. You guys are fully rested. You got your eight hours of sleep and all your spells are back if you have spells. Key. All hey, your panache. abilities that reset after a rest are, are reset. <laughs> You found your keys. All my key is back. I feel my good. panache <laughs> is back. <laughs> so, was there anything y'all wanted to do before 
going through the phase door? Or are you ready to take off through the phase door? We have the healing stuff for the Chariz constitution Maybe damage. Not. Do we do that? Yeah, I cuddled you. I, I, yeah, yeah, I believe. Yeah, so I uh, we did all that. Yeah, uh, yeah, we're gonna do all of that off air. Good times. Because Grubert had enough spells less spells left to uh, heal you up to a certain point, and then yeah, we're gonna yeah. heal the rest of it overnight because mm-hmm. he was gonna stay up with you. Read your bedtime story. This tend time. to your needs. Mm-hmm. Ah, yes, yes. It's the first time in a long time that y'all have actually been fully rested and recovered. It seems like it, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Resting is not y'all's strong suit. No, we made bad decisions. <laughs> that's that's why there's no original <laughs> characters left. Yeah, the next time we go into a fight, I'm going to go, I'm tired, I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> tired of being admired. <laughs> 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 All right. So is everybody healed up? Yes. I'm ready to take on the world. Okay. Any early morning fireside chats or anything before we head through the phase door? Or are you just ready to get moving? <laughs> We're going to hit him. We're going to hit him hard. No. <laughs> now I do ha- I do have one question. What about pot chop? I was just about to say I don't know if pork chop's going to beat through this door. But I feel like I owe it to my little buddy to find out. Pork chop just turns out to be a figment of your imagination. Or like a <laughs> sock or something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> pork chop was always beside the applesauce. Pork chop was never <laughs> real. Pork chop was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So you guys make your way. Well, first, you know. Go downstairs to where the phase door is through that standing stone. Uh, Jenny has to place the the amulet in the little key slot. Do I have to say magic words or anything? It's like a regular door. It's like, you know, like, come on, baby. <laughs> she licks it first. Let me get it in. As you slide it into the <laughs> slot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Just the tip. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we have just changed ratings. <laughs> anyway. Oh, we can turn this to a nasty podcast. <laughs> yeah. We're already explicit. How much how much worse can we get? <laughs> well, damn. Uh. So did y'all ever decide if uh, the animals are coming with you or if they're staying topside? Well, I mean... Since they're only five foot, creep, you know, they only take five foot. <laughs> I guess so. I'm going. <laughs> well, Keith already said he's going with. Yeah. Well, Havoc is large, so he takes up more space. Yeah, man. And I got animal growth or animal growth anyway. I think so. I can reduce him as well. You could put him in your pocket. Yeah, bro. Put him on my shoulder like a little parrot. (laughs) Pocket Mastodon. (laughs) Dude, imagine like quarterbacking him, having my hand, like throw him to to the enemy. Enemy catches him. And then animal growth, he's huge. (laughs) Oh, okay. (laughs) We have to try that. All right. So you all, including the animals, uh, make your way through the phase door. Wah, 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 wah. Uh, on the other side, you find crude stone stairs that open into a wide natural cavern. An alcove to the north holds a tall glass tank in which stands the perfectly preserved corpse of a man. A single large discolored bronze bell inscribed with strange runes hangs from one wall. So that's going to be around the corner when you get in. So the bronze bell, it had writing on it also? It does. It has some of these weird, strange runes kind of inscribed on it. Do they look familiar to me? What languages do you speak? Ooh, I think I only speak common, but let me be sure. Yes. <laughs> I don't speak any of the dirty tongues. 
<laughs> Say what? <laughs> I begin hissing. <laughs> I speak Islanti in common. You commoner. <laughs> I do speak catfolk, and yes, I do. Does anybody speak Abolith? Mine, yeah, I do not speak Abolith. Just catfolk in common. Ah, uh, I see it. I got it. Common, dragon, dragonic, and orc. So we can't read this. Okay. Nobody can read it, so it's a uh, somewhat. Is the bell magic? Does somebody have detect magic? Because I can read, I can read magic. Uh, are you detecting magic? I have detect magic. So if I detect magic, does anything in this room radiate magic? Uh, looks like the. Uh-huh bell itself is radiating magic and then the phase door okay. behind you of course in, in that instance can i read it uh it's not a magical writing okay. got it okay it's just an inscription that's on it um but if you do a knowledge arcana you can see what this bell is 24. 24. Anybody else have Knowledge Arcana? Not me. Sorry. Uh, I, I do have a, a 3 in it. Let me try. Oh, I got a 15. Perfect. Uh, so I'll count that as an aid for that to put it over at the DC 25. Uh... You would recognize this as the focus of an alarm spell. Oh. <laughs> so don't touch it. No touchy. Unless it's already going off. Can we tell if it's already going off? It is not going off. It actually looks like it's not set. How big is the bell? It's a very large bell. So I couldn't put it in my pocket. Oh. No. <laughs> Unless you got some jinkos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then maybe. Uh, you also notice as you look cl- more closely at this bell, uh, there is another medallion hanging from it that matches the one that you used on the other side of the phase door. So the key for this side. Ah. So the key that I have now is not going to take us back. Mm-hmm. We have to get this key. But. Uh, we risk setting off an alarm. It looked like it wasn't set. Um, can we de- detect traps or, or whatever? Or, uh, I do not have that. Yeah, anything like that? Uh, anybody have the disabled device to detect traps? Uh, I do. I have a four in it. So I got a 17? You don't see any mechanical Ooh. traps. Actually, I've got a five in it. I just checked. Yeah, go for it. I'm not that good at it. Ugh, gross. Uh, 15, so we'll go with 17. Okay, you also do not see any mechanical traps. Now, do either of you that have disabled device, do y'all have the trap-finding ability? No. Okay. So, since neither of you have that, you wouldn't be able to detect any magical traps. But you can still use that to detect uh, mechanical traps. Oh, okay. Yeah, You have to have that trap-finding ability like a rogue gets to detect magical traps. Yeah, I'm not that one. <laughs> That's right. I forgot about that. And our rogue left us. Yeah, what a piece of shit. So roguish. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but as I said, it doesn't look like the alarm spell is currently set, so you could probably just take this medallion without take it. Take it. Well, I guess I'll take it. The alarm, and your hand falls off, <laughs> <laughs> and it's melted. <laughs> Darn it! I needed that hand. <laughs> okay, so I have another key. <laughs> a key is the key. A key, a key. Okay, so. Um, do we recognize the person in the tank? In fact, 
<laughs> you do, because you're familiar with that uh, statue in the center of town. This is none other than the corpse of Cassius Undiomed. Oh, yeah. Now, is this a backed tank? Um, he ain't healing in there, right? Oh. So, the more you inspect it, uh, you can tell that this tank is full of alcohol that is preserving his body. Uh, you also see a small lectern next to the tank that holds a small book that is bound in shark skin. Is it radiating any magic? It is not radiating magic. I'm gonna, I'm gonna dip a cup in and take some Cassia shots. And who else wants one? <laughs> <laughs> so does the book? Can we tell what, what language that's in? Is it the same as the runes? The book is written in common. <laughs> oh, the only tongue. <laughs> Totally. You what is this book? Flip through the book. This book is actually Cassius Undiomede's journal. Uh, as you flip through most of it, uh, there's some several mundane entries about his daily life and uh, what he was doing, but it also describes his first meeting with the neighbors. Hmm. Took 12 vitamins uh, and I'm feeling great. Right, it's that kind of stuff. But uh, it does describe his first meeting with the neighbors. He never describes them physically, but the text gives the impression that the neighbors are something other than human. The journal also mentions the neighbor's home. There are some submerged tunnels at the bottom of Avalon Bay at the base of the Turn Rocks. Later entries detail Cassius's eventual lordship, and the institution of the fostering pact between Cassius and the neighbors, and it includes the line, I can only ensure the health and prosperity of Baytown and my own line by giving the neighbors what they require, even if that means giving up my own daughters and those of my heirs and my people. Regardless of my personal feelings, it is a small price to pay for such security. Yes. It... <laughs> All right. So we already knew this guy was a piece of shit. So now we've got it confirmed in writing. <laughs> yes. But uh, the entryway mm -hmm. at the base of the Turn Rocks might be something that um, our friend Thwip might be concerned about. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, does Would I know anything about it at all? Like the area, is it known for missing sailors or it sounds like a dangerous area anyways. Uh, the turn rocks are, uh, so Thwip, yeah, Thwip wasn't with the group at the time, but the rest of the group, yes. uh, do you yeah. remember when you saved the guy on the boat, the old man, uh, he was about to crash into the turn rocks. So it's that area there. The Turn Rocks is also uh, where the mayor of this town told y'all that, you know, they just kind of hang prisoners out there and let the, you know, whatever happens to them happen. So they just shackle them up to the Turn Rocks and most of them are never seen again. So the, the Turn Rocks are, are well known. Jenny's just as, as uh, I'm guessing Thwip read that out loud, um, as he's reading, she's just glaring at this uh, preserved person um, and what she really 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 wants to do is um, break this uh, this tube this holding cell whatever you want to call it um, yes so he could just be dead test tube well, she's just thinking about it. She, she hasn't made a decision yet. Um, she hates the thought of girls being disposable, girls being thought of as currency. Uh, before you do that, give me a perception check. Mm -hmm. 19. Yeah. In fact, everybody, go ahead and give me a perception check.
15. And, uh... Okay. Uh, those of you above 15, um, while you're standing here in this room, uh, you do start to notice the smell of garbage or compost emanating from the northwest tunnel. Uh, so that's going to be the this tunnel down here. <laughs> um, so we'll just say the west tunnel. <laughs> uh, and you also, to the south, hear the sounds of some sort of occupation. So something is down there. So smell of garbage coming from the west, the sounds of other creatures to the south. Uh, so the sounds, does it sound far off or just like kind of close? And, and what kind of sounds? Just like chatter, like talking or? Uh, some chatter and uh, um, kind of sounds of motion moving about a bit. Um, it, it sounds not like super far away, but, you know, more than 100 feet away. So this new trident, um, since we can hear the 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 pitter patter of little feet or whatever, um, it is the trident of warning. So um, mm -hmm. if I point down that way, um, you know, it gives me a warning. It gives them all a warning. But I'm having oh, problems now <laughs> with my hero lab. Keeps crashing. They have to be fishy monsters, though. So the Trident of Warning would be able to locate any aquatic... Yeah, they have to be aquatic predators. Uh, but... If you want to use it, you can try it. You can determine the location, depth, kind, and number of aquatic predators within 680 feet. And it's a it's a hemisphere. So it's not quite a circle. I can't find out what's behind me, but I can find out what's in front, above, side to side, from where I'm at. So... And it, yeah, and it's only aquatic. So if they were orcs... I'm out of luck. Just getting an idea of how far. I know it's it's definitely less than 680 feet. Okay, so you are using the Trident of Warning to try to figure it out? Yes. Okay, to the south, you do detect seven aquatic creatures. Oh my god. They're about 100 feet away to the south. Uh, uh, different types. Uh, you detect scum. And... Yeah, they're, they're all scum. But one is a different type of scum. So scum. she's going to give them the warning. Oh, there's something coming. She's going to say that way. Well, she's pointing that way anyway. From the south. And that that entryway appears large, correct? Yes. I'm going to go to Giant Kitty now. <laughs> Dire line, please. I'll spin my new key. Meow. So, are we going garbage? Are we going to fight these people? What do you think? I think we should fight these people. Yeah, as I was thinking too, is I bet the garbage is like where they dump bodies or something. So, do we want to cast any spells on us preemptively to like 
yeah, I'm checking my spells right now to see. Uh, I don't want to cast, cast the ones that are, you know, per round because that goes away real quick. Yeah, the only one that I would cast right now would be haste, and that is um, per round. So I'll have to wait on that. Okay. So are we continuing on? Um, I think I will preemptively put bark skin on the kitty. So you get plus. You get plus five to your AC. Ooh, okay. All right. Lead the way, sir. Plus five to the cat on the AC. Now I'm feeling funky. <laughs> Let's get funky, punk. All right. Who's making a move? Diego. Mm-hmm. I think that you and Thwip should lead the way. Okay. Uh, I will move down towards the entryway. It's it's down further south, not the this side passage, right? Correct. The side passage is the one that goes toward the garbage. But further down here... There you go. And as you round that corner... Yeah. Pause there for a second. <laughs> okay. As you round the corner, you see these weird fish like creatures that you've so far only seen in the these pictures and descriptions. Uh they're kind of wandering about kind of in this like hasty kind of mood. Um they're chattering in a language that you don't understand. And then in the center, you see one really large scum that looks kind of like a mix between a just a regular fish and a shark. Oh. Kind of think uh, King Shark, but if he had more like fish gills. Oh, okay. Fish fins and stuff on his face. Okay, but if he says anything, you have to voice it like Ron Funches. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He has a perfect view looking at you as you round the corner and he sees you and in this language you don't understand it seems like he gives the order to attack Uh and we're rolling for initiative (laughs) okay Well, I'm glad I got that out of the way. <laughs> nice. All right. The whip. Fifteen. Fifteen. Jenny. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Diego. Three. Three. Grubert. Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. Uh, we are starting things off with Jenny. All right. Well, she's going to get a little closer and cast haste. Everyone's favorite. Getting hasty. And that's all she's going to do right now. Okay. Uh, anything for Pablo? Uh, no. Okay. Next up are the scum. They will move up the one that is closest to Diego. Now will throw a trident at you. And he will miss with a nine. Lovely. The others are still standing back. All right. Grubert. Okay, so I think 
I think Gruber is going to cast Fire Snake. So, let's see. Okay, so Fire Snake says I get one five foot square for my caster level. So, that would be, I guess, ten. And so. I'm gonna go five. Let's see. So I'm going to start with the people hanging back. I'm going to get, there's three in a line with uh, one block missing. So I'll go four there. And then I will uh, go four and then hit all the sections with the big guy for 10. Did that make sense? So you're doing the line starting with this guy? Correct. Yep. To the third guy. All the way down. And then to the right, mm-hmm. and then get the four squares that this the big guy is in. So five, yeah. six, seven, eight, nine. Sweet. Okay. And they're they're amphibious, right? So they're like super deadly to fire, right? So they're super perceptive to fire. They are aquatic. Uh, they don't have like a vulnerability to fire. Oh, come on. Oh. For anything, they would have a resistance, I would think. Water beats fire. Now, I think vulnerable because they don't get to see fire that often. You have to cook a fish. <laughs> cook a fish. I say it says creatures in the path of fire snake take 1d6 of fire damage per caster level. So 10d6? Yep. And there's no save or anything like that for it. Reflex save. Reflex save. And if you and if you pass, you get half the damage. Reflex save. All right. Okay. okay. So, start with the scum. Uh, scum one. Where is your save? There it is. Fifteen. Pass that one. Second one's a 21. <laughs> of course it is. Third one's a natural 20. And then... Mr. Giant Scum saves. There we go. 23. Okay, so everybody saves. All right. But hopefully, out of 10d6, we can still do some good damage. Even with half of it. Seven, eight, nine, ten, fourteen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty-one, twenty-three, and last one, twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Okay, so they each take fourteen points of damage. Okay. I will say that the little scum that hurt quite a bit. Nice. Start off with some cooked fish. Let's go. Hey, there we go. Hey. It smells like anchovies in here. <laughs> but the big guy oh. looked like that. <laughs> big guy looked like that barely scratched him. All right. Um, and then uh, for havoc, uh, can we do a trample on the? Um, the scum that is closest to Diego. Can he fit through that slot? I know Diego's there. He would... He would not be able to, because he does not have a clear okay. shot for a, a straightaway. He would run over all of your people That's fine. in doing it, it's too. Only, it's only a flip. It's cool. <laughs> the new guy. <laughs> whip, whip you and Diego. Alright, well then, uh, can I move Havoc up then? Yeah, you can move him up. He just okay. wouldn't be able to do the, the charge. He, he can still attack, though, right? He can still gore or something. Perfect. Okay. Well, then I will move okay. Havoc up to be beside Diego in front of the scum. Okay. Yeah, you can still move up and attack. Perfect. You just can't do the trample. Because you, uh, to trample, you have to have the charge uh, ability available. And to have a charge, you have to have a clear, unimpeded path. Got it. Got it. Makes sense. All right. Well, in that case, 
Let's do some Gorin, man. Okay. 27. Definitely a hit. This is 2d6 plus 10. 6. 8. So 18? Ooh, right. nice. 18. Go have it. That really hurt him. <laughs> he kind of has a weird <laughs> fish humanoid monster hanging off of his tusk. I like it. But he's still alive. <laughs> All right. Next up is Thwip. All right. Uh, so Thwip is going to... Let's see. Yeah, he'll move between... I think Havoc's got that one pretty well in hand. So he's going to move up to the one that's the next in line, basically. And he's going to uh, attack this guy. All right. Oh, I should have uh, not gotten that close because I need my blue scarf. But you know what? I'm already there, so I'll just go with it. Uh, that is 23. That's a hit. Nineteen points of damage. Big hit. All right. Anything else for Thwip? I think that's all I can do. Even if I'm hasted, I can't. It's only a full round attack. It would be a third one if I was had not moved right. So, yeah, I'm done. Uh, I think you get an extra attack, even if you do. Oh, if it's not full round. Oh, okay. Then I will take another little slash at this guy. Thirty-one. Definitely a hit. And uh, go ahead and tell me how you kill him. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so he's just gonna go straight for the uh, right across the neck, just to try to lop his head off, but uh, just straight through the neck. <laughs> so that's a. Uh, All right. <laughs> Twenty-three points of damage. Yeah, his head comes off. Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> he had one hit point left. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so as you can tell, these little scum are not very strong. Yeah, yeah. I have a feeling that when it comes their turn, they might be able to make some trouble. Though. They're the minions. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> All right, it's the big guy's turn. Uh. You see him, he looks at you, and then he kind of squints and he shakes his head for a second. Let's see. Uh, okay, he has to act normally. What does he want to do? He's got plenty of movement to get up to Thwip, and he is going to... Oh, no. Swing his great axe at you. Oh no. It's a barbarian? And thing? also rage in the process. <laughs> oh no. Oh hail. <laughs> he is a barbarian. So that'll be a 29 to hit. Oh, thank God, that's a miss. Ah. <laughs> yeah, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you're aware, I rolled a natural five. <laughs> All right. So he swings and misses uh, because he moved. That's his only attack that he gets this round, but he is raging. All right. That brings us to Diego. Yay, Diego can finally go. Um, all right. Uh, if I run past this minion and park myself right here in front of these two minion. I guess I'm going to take attack of opportunity. He'll probably miss anyway, because I don't think he can hit your AC. I'll take it. 
Because uh, that's a... Uh... So... The big dude. Is that guy still... Uh, which which the one? Guy, the, one yeah. that... the guy that attacked me, is he you still... Move him up to the big dude? Because on our screen, he's back. He's still back in the... Yeah. Oh, he's right next to Thwip on mine. Yeah, I see him. Yeah, I see him in his original spot. Uh, no, we have him back over <laughs> on the other side. I can't see anything. <laughs> now. I'm still around the corner. <laughs> Where fudge is made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see everybody else's move. Oh, there, I see there he Diego goes. move. Yeah. Oh, there he goes. But is everybody else moved? Okay. Oh, okay, he moved. Weird. Okay. Uh, great. Uh, so yeah, the... I'm assuming a 21 does not hit. No, it does not. Yeah, didn't think so. The only way I can hit on... The way, only way I can hit you with these scum is uh, with a natural 20. Okay. Yeah, and Diego would have actually parked himself right beside Thwip with that guy there, just because that would be where he would go. Okay. On the dead scum, yes. It's underneath <laughs> my foot, squishing in my toes. Um, Diego is going to <laughs> look at the giant monster and say, you fish must be scuttled. And he oh, is oh. going to do an unarmed strike on him and hopefully land a stunning fist. Okay. For the strike, that is a 32. Definitely would be a hit. And I need a fortitude save from the critter. Fortitude. Thirty-two. Well, dang. Uh, I think that plays. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, just take your points and go then. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's going to take 11 points of bludgeoning damage okay and I can still get my hasted attack right yeah uh, well, I was so excited to answer yeah cause you're hasted but I, yes. I don't know if he within the rules he got his hasted attack yeah, you still get an extra attack per round. Uh, 17. Okay, that is a 17 to hit. Mm. Okay. That would miss. And I will park and wait. Alright. Odd for a kitty. Park and bark. All right, Jenny. Mm -hmm. Well, you do have bark skin. Hey, I can see people now. Hold on. I move. One, two. All right, so Pablo is, for all intents and purposes, Pablo is the one moving. I'm just riding Pablo. He can get to... We'll say right here. And now it's Jenny's turn. So I can hit three times, right? Yep. Here I go. With my um, trident, I'm going to hit for 19. That would hit. Oh. Uh, yeah. Um, well, I rolled a natural 19, so I'm going to guess that's a hit. Yes. Another, uh, well, this one is lower. Fourteen. Well, you you only need the first hit. I'll just say that. Oh, okay. <laughs> so so tell me how how you kill him. <laughs> um, I kill him by flipping the trident upside down and just right through the head. Into his head. Exactly, and then. A lot of head in this episode. 
<laughs> yes. No, I pull it out, and as I do, it sprays yeah. gross <laughs> fish blood and guts, or brains. All right, so that's two dead scum. Anything else from Jenny? No, well, that's all she can do. The remaining scum's turn. This one will move up. And basically take the place of the one that was down there. So one has basically kicked the dead one out of the way and replaced it. Yeah. And then the others are all surrounding Diego, so they're all going to attack Diego. <laughs> I'm feeling swarmed. So we'll do the ones on Diego first, because I have to I have to get a natural twenty to hit. First one. Nope. Second one. Nope. Third one. Nope. <laughs> uh, and then we'll say the one is reaching up to attack Jenny. Uh, one step to replace it. Uh, and that is a 17 to hit. Yeah. No, get out of here with that. All right, so all the scum miss. <laughs> As scum should. All right, Grubert. Okay, so Grubert sees that these guys are, like, super weak, so he wants to get in on the, the stabbing people and cutting off people's heads action. So let's go. He wants to move up to the scum <laughs> that is by Havoc and Pablo. All right. Five. And he will stab it with his scimitar. Uh, 22. Okay. That's a hit. So, for 10 points of damage. <laughs> Alright, All right. so... Still standing. Uh, Gruber will wink at Havoc then, and be like, hey, uh, can you finish that for me? And Havoc, and Havoc will, uh, will go ahead and <laughs> gore him. I think you get one more attack, though, don't you? Uh, do I? Because I'm hasted, right? Yeah. Oh. So I actually get to kill somebody, maybe? Hmm. <laughs> okay. Maybe. All right, let's see. Maybe. No, he, I mean, I don't. I won't get to kill anybody. Unless you want to give to Havoc. <laughs> Havoc. Havoc does my dirty work, so this will be fun. <laughs> so 22. Okay. Oh, yeah. Let's see if I can kill him. That's a hit. Oh, it's another 10. It's just enough to kill him. <laughs> Got him. Yeah! Uh, now you have to describe your killings. So, how, how do you kill him? Um, <laughs> I guess since he sees everybody else cutting off everybody's head, I mean, he's going to go, he's going to try to do, like, full head chop with the scimitar. But he's probably really weak, so, like, it just goes, like, halfway through, you know, and <laughs> he's, right. like, trying to get it out. He's like, ah. Give it yeah. back. <laughs> and so you probably got him, since you got him just exactly to zero, it, it gets stuck yeah. in there. You don't actually do a clean cut all the way through. Yeah. And I'm a little embarrassed. I'm like, oh. Turned it into a Pez dispenser. like the cool kids. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Perfect. Exactly. Uh, all right. Does Havoc want to do anything? I was going to say, well, Havoc then will move up to um, the scum that is north of uh, Diego, and he will he will go for the gore. Let's see. Now, is Havoc hasted as well? I didn't think about this. Do animals, do animals get hasted too? I get, hold on, I mean, Depends on double how many check, but I think all of us are available are. within your spell. Haste, 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 haste. Close. One creature per level. So, yes, I can do up to eight. Perfect. Wonderful. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then we'll say Havoc is hasted then. So since he moved, that'll take one action and I get two attacks, correct? Yes, but I'm pretty sure you're only going to need Perfect. one. Okay. Well, <laughs> cool. let's see. 
Oh yeah, because you snaked that guy earlier. Yeah. So the gore is thirty-two. Definitely hit. Six plus ten. Mm-hmm. Four. Two. So 16? Yeah. How do you kill him? <laughs> oh. Well, I don't think Havoc can go for <laughs> a clean head chop. So he's going to do <laughs> like what you said earlier and just ram tusk him, but just leave him there. So he's just like flopping around on the tusk. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's going to be like those people that just have the ears just around has their a neck. He's just going to have multiple. Yeah. Just all over him. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's just going to have scum. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Next up then is Thwip. Ooh, all right. Uh, Thwip is going to just attack this big guy in front of him. He's going to. He's going to be like. It's going to be quite the fish fry. Fry, baby, fry. (laughs) First attack is... Uh, 34. That's it. Ooh, alright. For... 24 points of damage. And the second attack is... Oh, that's right. 21. That's a hit. Twenty-one points of damage. And the hasted attack. Ooh, nat twenty. Roll to confirm. Uh Oh, come on. Twenty-eight to confirm. That is a confirmed critical. (gasps) Ooh. Ooh. Let me get your crit card. I don't know why, but this attack, this uh, encounter has got me thinking about Catfish King. <laughs> <laughs> Find up some catfish. That's why I'm like, oh, shoot, I'm going for the lake record today. <laughs> okay. Now, what type of weapon uh, are you using? Scimitar, so sla- well, I can use it as slashing or piercing. Uh, we'll say piercing. Piercing. Shoulder wound. Triple damage. Oh, oh wow. dang. And 1d2 strength and dex damage. Okay. That's gonna Okay. So roll my attack three times. Well, you damage. But I multiply it by three. Yeah, roll it. Okay. So. Roll the damage die three times. And whatever the plus is on top of that is tripled. Oh, damn. That is 66 oh points of damage. Oh, my God. <laughs> Ouch. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> How do you kill him? Jesus. Um, yeah, uh, since we're chopping heads, I mean, let's, uh, let's get that trophy. So you start from the shoulder and then work your way up to the head? Yeah, I think you're just going to have to get in there. All right. Uh, so Thwip, with his scimitar, just stabs into the shoulder and then basically cuts up, chopping off the the head with a little bit of the shoulder left on it, too. And uh, <laughs> Diego looks at Thwip and goes, Impressive, yeah. my friend. <laughs> All right, so the big guy is dead. You still have two scum left. So, after seeing all of their little (laughs) friends get smushed, and then the big boss get smushed, are they still attacking, or are they going to run away? um, They're they're still attacking, but um, they're terrified. I wish we could talk their language, because I'm sure we could get some information out of them. Nobody has a speak with monster spell? Because I sure know. Uh, to speak with them, you would have to speak Aboleth or Undercommon. Ooh, Undercommon, that's pretty common. Yeah, I got none of that. Definitely don't speak that. But, uh, they're still in fighting mode. <laughs> Alright, uh, it would have been his turn, but he did. Uh, Diego. Uh, okay, so... 
Diego looks at the little dude, the scum that is trying to attack him, and shakes his head and goes for <laughs> blows on him. All right. You do have two, so you could split the attack. I am going to split the attack. One, mm-hmm. one right. attack. Missed. <laughs> the first one was an 18. Yeah, that's a hit. Uh, I'm not even going to worry with damage. Just tell me uh, how you kill them. I'm, I'm kind of imagining that at this point you just basically bitch slap both of them and they go flying into the wall behind them and just kind of splatter against the wall. That sounds appropriate, yes. He was just like... Shoo, shoo. <laughs> uh, the next one is a uh, 22. Okay. Yeah, yeah okay, they're I both mean, if dead. You, if you want to bust their heads, you can grab both of them and then just uh. head crush. Both, <laughs> yeah. And then just all their heads are gone. And just crush them together, too. <laughs> 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 wow, that's really sad because the the big guy was actually kind of cool. He would have been fun to fight with. He had a low AC though, so that would that made it easy oh, to hit. Him. That sound that does sound sad. <laughs> yep. Nope. I'm crying. <laughs> but... He definitely looked cool. Because <laughs> if I would have actually got a if I'd have gotten a full round attack off with him, he had his he could attack twice with the hey. uh, great axe. Yeah. He could bite. And claw all in one round. Jesus, see that's what I was scared of too. Whenever you were like, "Oh yeah, I rolled a five. I was like, "What? And you barely missed?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> stupid crit. <laughs> uh well, well, you killed the big guy. Uh, Absolutely, at least down here. I don't know. Do you want to loot the body? Does he have anything cool? Let's say, uh, yeah, I'm gonna. Search I do, him but over. I also could. Kinda... I kind of want to loot his teeth and make a necklace. Man, that's the the you got a good idea of what he looks like with the picture that's down there. Yeah, he looks pretty cool. Yeah. All right, let's see here. What does he have on him? Okay, he has a masterwork heavy steel shield. He has this great axe that is radiating magic. I'm just assuming you're detecting Mm. magic. Of course. He has an amulet that is detecting magic. And... He has a dozen gemstones that are worth 50 gold pieces each. Going, going, going. He has a brooch and two bracelets made of that reddish fish gold that are worth a total of 450 gold pieces. And these little fish stains, do they have any? That's all he's got on them. Anything? <laughs> I mean, they could have had like a copper or two. No, they don't. I mean, they have. They have, they have regular tridents and stuff on them. I don't want that. So let's talk about... I want to talk about the amulet first. Okay. Let's do a spellcraft. Yeah, if anybody wants to aid Ooh. in the spellcraft. I will you. aid anybody who wants to do have... spellcraft. <laughs> I do not I do not have spellcraft, I don't think. <laughs> I, I have spellcraft, sure. but I don't have any pluses to it. But Ooh. I can try. Let's see. No, I only got. I an got eight. an eight too, which I mean, in total <laughs> would be. A I actually have a plus one of spellcraft. I got a plus one on spellcraft. Let me try. This may be horrible. <laughs> I got a seven. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so y'all don't know what the amulet is. Eight, uh, eight, 14. What, what was the highest total on the spellcraft? 14. Uh, with, eh. Because I think y'all already have one in the party. 
I would say that the 14, you would recognize this as a, uh, an amulet of natural armor plus two. Because I think somebody I already has a, I have a plus uh, amulet one. of natural armor. So, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I do not switch it out. I have an amulet of natural armor plus one. So, since this is plus two, I'm going to take it. And does anybody want my plus one? I'll take it. Anybody else? Keith, do you have anything I mean, already... boosting up your AC? Uh, I have a cloak of resistance. That's, that's, that's not all AC. I have. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the only you, additional thing so I have. You know what? doesn't really do your AC. You probably need to keep <laughs> that's that then. Saves. You, I'm going to give the resistance or the, the amulet of natural armor to you. So you get the plus two. Okay. There you go. Perfect. I'm so strong now. <laughs> Let's roll on the great axe. <laughs> All right. Do you want to roll on the Another great axe? Craft? Okay. Oh, this one is better. Yes. 20. Can I get some aid? Not from Keith. Okay. I got a nine. Does that help? Nope. <laughs> I got another. I got another eight. Does that help? Is that total nine, nine or a nine on the die? Yeah. <laughs> so, well, crap. You need at least ten to aid. <laughs> uh, so the. I'll say with a twenty, that you know it's a plus one great axe. It has another property to it, but you can't figure out what it is yet. Does anybody need a great axe? I can't use it. So. I can't use it. No, I can't use it. We can sell it. We can throw it in the yeah, bag of holding and sell it. Is the shield radiating magic too? It is not. It is just masterwork. Hmm. So it'd still be worth something. Yeah. Can can Havoc hold the great axe in his tusk? Mm -hmm. Or in his nose? And just slash people? <laughs> That would be amazing. <laughs> I mean, they can, elephants can paint, so maybe he can. That's true. <laughs> Japan, Japan. I, I think he would require a little bit of training on that. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll work on that. <laughs> I want to see the training montage for that. <laughs> we need a montage. <laughs> he swings it and he just loses loses grip of it it keeps like <laughs> just flying off almost killing people <laughs> every time it almost kills somebody you, you give that shrug yeah mm -hmm. and you're just there with like your hands on your hips like looking yeah. at him oops sorry so you got all that Gary alright so that's all that's down here in this room Continued. Should we go to the garbage? Continue back yeah, out to the north. Follow your nose. Did you get all the the gold, the gold that we got, or the gems that we got? All the rocks that we got. Yeah, I wrote it down. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still Jenny from the block. Hey, it still works. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. You want to go to Garbage Town now? Okay. Mm <laughs> Make your way through here. Head into where the gar garbage. Uh, you see a series of natural terraces forming sloping, uh, forming a sloping passage that descends into this cavern. Murky black waters filled with piles of compost and detritus flood the sloping northern floor of the cavern. A multitude of fungi and colorless Colorless subterranean creepers grow over and within this vile stew. You can either inspect that area to the north or continue over to... So, this is where the... that mound of fungus and uh, rubbish and all that stuff is up here. This is technically... <laughs> Alright. Alright, I'll get kind of close... 
to it and try to look just to make sure old pork chop's not there. As you get closer to this pile of rubbish and fungus and basically pieces of like chopped up uh, corpses and things like that are all thrown in this pile together. It's actually a huge turtle like in Moana. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, as you get closer to this, you know, pile of all this gunk and disgustingness, two what look like vines almost <gasps> reach out and lash out to grab you. Ooh. Ooh. Oh! And we'll roll for initiative next time. Not the vines. Trash vines. <laughs> Man. Oh, what is it with your character and plants? <laughs> <laughs>